Chesapeake Bay oysters, past, present, and future. What happened to all the oysters? But by looking at causes and declines 125 years ago, millions of bushels of oysters harvested, tens of thousands of people employed, a third of a million acres of suitable habitat, and then there was the overfishing and habitat destruction by taking the shell away and not putting it back. So 50 years ago, we're down to a few million bushels and only 200,000 acres of suitable habitat. That continued and disease entered into the equation so that now we believe there's only about a tenth of 100,000 bushels being harvested yearly compared with millions a few years ago. Fewer number of watermen and processing companies and the habitat has been so disturbed and covered over with silt that the acreage is very much less. So the losses for society, there are fewer watermen uh, because there's fewer oysters. Their processing plants are shutting down. Restaurants have to buy oysters from other parts of the country. And you no longer see these dredging sailboats out there working the way they used to. So the cultural heritage is lost. I'm Ben Parks. I was born, raised on Hopers Island, worked the bulk of my entire commercial fishery in the lower part of Chesapeake Bay and its tributaries. There's more dredge boats on the bay that, that my grandfather owned than what's on the whole entire bay now. It's a dr dramatic decline. I would like to see it, it, it get back to where the, the younger guys, and I was kind of hoping that, you know, maybe with all the restoration work that's being done, that they'll be able to follow in the footsteps of their fathers and grandparents and great-grandparents like I've been able to do. I like to see it, it, it be here for their future like it was for mine. Why do we need oysters? Altogether, a healthy reef will provide habitat for those that rely on reefs, help clear the water, provide food for waterfowl and humans, and provide substrate and stabilization for the bottom of the bay. To summarize the ecosystem consequences of losing reefs, as you remove oysters due to fishing and disease, you begin to remove the other organisms that live among the reefs. Sand and silt from runoff help to bury the reefs even more, and low oxygen conditions result in the bottom with no oysters left to filter and bury the dead sinking algae. How can we bring oysters back? We can create sanctuaries with no harvest and optimal locations where reefs can grow with dense clusters of males and big old fecund females. The females will produce many eggs, the larvae have a chance to develop in good salinities, and the adults won't be as susceptible to disease. These areas would be excellent for restoring oyster populations in Chesapeake Bay, and in fact, Oyster sanctuaries are currently being located in these optimal areas. In Maryland, many different groups are involved in oyster restoration. These range from state and government agencies, academic institutions, nonprofit organizations, interest groups, and local communities. This figure from ORP helps visualize the impact of restoration activities in Maryland. Since 2000, over 4 billion oysters have been planted on 70 reefs covering 1,500 acres. 2012 has been a record year with 880 million baby oysters planted, with the majority going to restore Harris Creek. Other programs, such as the Oyster Gardens, have provided an additional 2 million oysters for restoration. Hopefully with proper legislation, continuing partnerships, and the necessary support, these programs can continue to produce reefs, stimulate the economies, and set a good example for oyster restoration programs in other states. There are still many other options to help aid oyster restoration. These include volunteering with organizations that restore oysters by participating in programs or attending one of their many festivals, becoming involved in oyster gardening if you or someone you know has waterfront property on the bay, saving your oyster shells so they can go back in the bay to be used as substrate for reefs, and of course donating to one of these organizations. The future of oysters and the future of the bay rests in these programs as they work alongside science. Hopefully we can continue to improve the bay for ourselves and for future generations.